Seeking for a longer and eternal life is probably as old as the times humans realize they're not going to be alive forever. The quest for the fountain of youth dates centuries back. It's been part of fables and fairy tales. Many have been seeking for it in different parts of the world. Kings and queens have longed for eternal power, but allegedly with no success whatsoever. We all still age and eventually die. Death still wins in 100% of the cases. Or does it? Maybe we haven't looked at the right place. Does all life on our planet actually exist in a cycle of life and death? Well, as you may have guessed, the answer is no. And the secret of the Fountain of Youth may not be in a hidden place in the depths of the most dangerous jungles, but could be hiding in plain sight. More specifically, in other living organisms. We just have to learn how they do it. There are some organisms that have learned to live extended lifespans in a magnitude of hundreds of years. Not only that, but there are indeed also some living organisms out there that have tricked death and found ways to live forever. Let's take a dive at what scientists find attractive in those animals that could teach us how to improve ourselves to possibly live for hundreds of years, if not more. Because if some can do it, we can do it too. There are a few species from which we can learn insights about the fundamental mechanisms of aging in humans. Some are living extended natural biological life cycles and some presumably live forever. Both groups have developed mechanisms for resistance to age-related diseases. For example, the bowhead whale has been estimated to live naturally up to 268 years based on genetic analysis. This makes it the longest living mammal which group we humans fall into as well. Although before believed the bigger the living organism, i.e. having more cells, the larger larger the chance of getting age-related diseases. But that seems to not be true for the bowhead whale as well as other mammals. The resistance to age-related diseases in bowhead whales are overall unknown, but in order for them to live for so long, these whales must possess some preventive mechanisms against such. Generally speaking, scientists are doing a lot of work sequencing the genes of the bowhead whales in search for the answers for their longevity. In the past few years, they have found some clues, more specifically two gene mutations under the abbreviation of ERCC1 and BCNA in bowhead whales that help prevent faster aging. Both are linked to increased DNA repair and cancer resistance abilities. ERCC1 is a protein and is found in humans as well encoded by a gene under the same name. It's also known that cancer has deficiency of this protein thus enabling cancer cells which are abnormal or damaged cells to spread uncontrollably without having anything to repair them. There are people with disabled ERCC1 protein in their bodies who have been born this way or have developed this in the process. This is the so-called Hoff syndrome, which is observed to cause neurologic decline and accelerated aging in humans. The other one I mentioned is the proliferating cell nuclear antigen, or PCNA, which is also a protein which in basic terms helps protect DNA during replication by forming the so-called DNA clamps that keep DNA polymerase enzymes stable to the DNA strands. So it's obvious to say that these genes can be directly related to influencing the pace of aging in mammals, including humans in that sense. Lobsters, on the other hand, also aquatic animals, not mammals though, also have extended lifespans compared to ours. The secret to their long lifespans is known to us and is called telomerase. Telomerase is an enzyme that helps regenerate the length of the telomeres, the end caps of the chromosomes that keep an eye on DNA errors and help fix them. So with age, telomeres become shorter and tire out. But this enzyme telomerase keeps telomeres long throughout the whole life of a lobster. High telomerase activities are detected in all lobsters organs. It's concluded by researchers that telomerase activation is a conserved mechanism for maintaining long-term self-proliferation capacity and preventing senescence. That's why lobsters, unlike other animals, stay fertile and keep growing throughout most of their life. They die mostly of infections or exhaustion during molting, but not aging or age-related reasons. So can we have procedures where we can boost telomerase in our body? Well, for now, researchers are still not sure how this can be helpful to humans for extending life spans, though in future it could most certainly be. It can be used for treating cancer, because in cancerous cells telomerase is strongly active, which keeps the process of repairing DNA in cancerous cells and enables them to divide many folds without the risk of them dying. Now, on top of that, one day we might be able to implement some techniques to repair ourselves and be able to greatly extend our lifespans, having learned how other species do it. There is another group of organisms that might teach us not only how to mitigate age-related problems, but to completely stop or reverse the process of senescence of our body cells. That's what some creatures like the Hydra, Planaria and some jellyfish can do, all contain within themselves mechanisms to reverse their cells' life or even regenerate parts of their bodies. There is light in the tunnel for us to understand how they 
do it. A few years ago, a Japanese scientist, Dr. Yamanaka, gets the Nobel Prize for the discovery of a group of four proteins named after him, the Yamanaka factors. Those proteins are directly related to the regulation and creation of stem cells in our body. They are highly expressed in embryonic stem cells, which are pluripotent cells, meaning they can become any other type of cell. More on that in a minute. Now, some jellyfish have a way to somehow use something like the Yamanaka factors and reset their epigenomes to an earlier time. The so-called immortal jellyfish, a tiny jellyfish about 4-5 millimeters in size, or 0.04 inches, which goes by the scientific name of Turritopsis dornii, and a couple of more jellyfish of the same family, can choose not to die but go through a whole cycle back in time and become a polyp again, which is the first form of a jellyfish before becoming a medusa, the adult form. This process is called cellular transdifferentiation, meaning cells that have already been assigned rows, like skin cells, eye cells, lung cells, can become different kind of cells directly. This is like if humans, once reached adulthood, could go back to be a baby again. Turritopsis dornii usually chooses to reverse its age either when it feels it's under physical threat or starvation. They have developed a complex set of tools that contributes to their genomic plasticity and longevity. In laboratorial environment, researchers have been putting such medusae under different stress conditions, sometimes even cutting them into halves with the idea to observe the age reversal process. This process goes through six stages, the last of which is the cyst form. When in a cyst form, Turritopsis dornii takes care of some of the key elements of aging, such as DNA repair and replication, reduction of oxidation in its direct environment that damages cells, improves cells-to-cell -cell communication, regenerates certain tissues, takes care of telomeres, and renews its stem cell population. There are a few especially interesting things happening here. First, transdifferentiation is a particularly interesting field for scientists because understanding this process of turning one cell into another directly over a short period of time can open the doors for treatments for some of the deadliest age-related diseases in humans. Imagine being able to turn any cell into any other. You could cure pretty much everything. And second, the telomere length and stem cells are one of the most important players in the process of aging. In humans, as well as those jellyfish, telomeres protect DNA from damage, especially during DNA replication. Stem cells have the role to help regenerate tissues and organs. For example, when back into a cyst form, Turritopsis dornii seems to have highly increased the number of telomerase enzymes, which help repair telomeres. And with such large amounts of those enzymes, it's obvious that this jellyfish is regenerating the length of its telomeres, therefore turning its biological clock back to an earlier stage. The renewal of the stem cell population is really important one as well, because in humans, as well as in other mammals, we tend to usually lose stem cells over time, while the ones that are left become more and more restricted. Let's take Planaria here, which seem to be the masters of regeneration through the use of stem cells. Planarian is a flatworm with one head, a body, and one tail, usually about 2 centimeters in size, and like the immortal jellyfish, is, well, immortal. And by immortality, we mean the ability to not age. They still die of infections and other reasons. The planarian is a very interesting creature. Their organism is such that if they get cut into two or more pieces, both parts have the ability to regrow the missing one by forming blastema, which is a mass or a cluster of cells that regrow into a body part later. This blastema is mostly comprised of pluripotent stem cells, which as mentioned earlier, are stem cells waiting to have their rows assigned, meaning they can become any type of cell inside that particular organism. A planarian usually has somewhere about the whopping 20% of stem cells, or even higher sometimes, of all its body cells. But that's not where the interesting part ends. Planaria can help scientists understand how the process of regenerating missing body parts happens, how they know where to stop and what exactly to regenerate. Michael Levin, a biologist with PhD in developmental and regenerative biology, with his team has done interesting experiments on these worms. They know that planaria is not only mortal and regenerates missing body parts, but also doesn't generally get any cancer. It's one of the most cancerous resistant organisms on the planet. These worms also have a brain and can remember things even after their brain has been cut off. The new brain, once grown back on, still remembers everything the previous brain has known before the cut. At their laboratory, Michael Levin and his team have done advanced research in tracking the bioelectric signals in these worms. So what they found out is that planaria have a very particular electric pattern that goes through the body which serves as a memory of where and what has to be regenerated. Moreover, if you tweak this pattern and incept a false bioelectrical memory, with the help of a particular set of drugs for that purpose, you can literally change where, for example, the tail or the head of a cut planarian goes. You can not only change that, but make so that the worm grows two heads
heads instead of one or two tails. And if you cut a two-headed worm into pieces, they still grow two heads. The incredible and amazing biological plasticity and regenerative abilities these creatures have feels as if they are an alien organism not from our planet. But what they can teach us about biology and regenerative medicine is almost unbelievable. Planaria is a solid example that biological systems could be programmed like a computer can. They also shatter into pieces the theory that the thermodynamic limitations on lifespan exist and everything ages and dies eventually. Well, not everything as it turns out. Scientists in regenerative biology and medicine are almost at one that one day will definitely be able to regenerate lost body parts or damaged tissues and organs. This could be one of the most revolutionary fields of science. Aside from the fear that we play God with this, being able to control bioelectric signals and body development would help with treating all kinds of severe injuries, the growth and transplantation of failing organs and especially age-related diseases. As Michael Levin says, Planaria holds the answer to pretty much every Every deep question of life. There are many other species out there that can teach us a lot about biological life and our body that I haven't included here because the video will become super long. But what we can learn from all those different organisms, from jellyfish to trees, from lobsters to whales, from hydras to worms, is that extended lifespans, biological cloning, regeneration of different body parts, age reversing, biological immortality. With ever increasing scientific knowledge and technological sophistication, such things might soon not be part of science fiction, but well explained and implemented scientific practices and therapies, which will put us in a completely new era of our society. One thing is certain, the fountain of youth is somewhere out there. It's in the knowledge hidden in plain sight, which we still don't have the eyes to see, but we are on the right path, I feel like. Nature has indeed once more proven that it has provided us with everything. We just need to explore, study, understand and implement. Thanks for watching.